What's up YouTube? Welcome to episode 4 of The Real Talks with the Physique Engineers. As usual, I have my friend the Physique Engineer with me. And today we're gonna go through a topic which I mentioned in my last video, which is the best pre and intra workout supplements. The way we're gonna approach this video is we're gonna go through the pre-workout supplements first and then the intra workout supplements. The pre-workout supplements will be broken into subsections because pre-workouts are kind of a big topic to cover, but we're only gonna scratch the surface so you guys know exactly what you want and what you need but before we begin i personally think that you don't need pre-workout supplements it's just a mindset that people generate over time that you need pre-workout supplements because it hypes you up or like gives you extra energy what's your thought on that i, I totally agree since i start paying for my own supplements i've come to figure out that pre-workouts are very expensive and when you use them over and over and over again prices build up so i work out five six times a week and I may only use pre-workout like twice a week. And I rarely use stimulant-based pre-workouts if ever now. So yeah, that was an overview. But now let's uh, first talk about the best pre-workout ingredients. So what are the ingredients we're gonna talk about today? We'll talk about caffeine. Okay. We'll talk about some other stimulants and pump ingredients. Okay, solid. So let's just uh, jump right into it. So first is stimulant is the one that you are really aware of caffeine. What's your take on caffeine as a pre-workout? We talked about it a lot in the fat loss video. It's used to boost endurance, strength, performance, basically everything you want before a lifting session. Uh, I personally like it because I rarely drink caffeine. I may have a coffee here or there. Most of the time I drink decaf. So when I take uh, two to 300 milligrams of caffeine, it really gives me a boost. Most people who our habitual caffeine users may not get that much of a hit from it, but it does help. So, yeah, as we mentioned in our last video, you get used to caffeine over time and then you have to up your dose. So it's advised to cycle off caffeine every eight to like 12 weeks for like four to six weeks, because then your body kind of resets and then you take caffeine and you can get the same effect you got it the first time you took it. So. That was for caffeine. What's your second favorite pre-workout ingredient? DMAA. Now, DMAA or DMAA was banned by the FDA because they said it's not a natural ingredient, so it's not naturally found in the world. I like it because it puts me in a zone like nothing else. Like a tunnel vision. Yeah, it is tunnel vision. Yeah, uh, it's one of the hardest hitting stimulants it is the hardest hitting stimulant i've ever ever had i personally use dmaa as well but i don't take it that often i'll only use it on some days where i have like really high volume and i need that focus to like go through this workout so i'll probably take a milliliter which is like 100 megs of that unnatural labs is a good uh, vendor for dmaa their pre-workout comes separate with dmaa instead of some companies that claim that they have like 50 megs or like 100 megs and you never know because it's a proprietary event. But that's all about DMAA. Do you have a third pre-workout ingredient in your head, like which you like? Well, if we're sticking with stimulants, I like Aria Genesis or Genesis, something like that. Yeah. Um, it gives you a really good feeling of euphoria. Mm. It makes you feel really good. So if you're gonna go work out, you don't want to be in a crappy mood. So this makes it lifts you up. You like want to high five everybody at the gym. You're you're motivated, you're excited, um, it's, it's pretty good. I like that one. Oh, okay, so I think three is more than enough stimulants because stimulants is something you should avoid to begin with because it's just not good for you in the long run. So that was all about stimulants. What's your favorite pump ingredient? Because that's what everyone goes in the gym for, that pump. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my favorite pump ingredient would be citrulline malate. Citrulline is proven to boost endurance and if I take six to eight grams of it, I get just outrageous pumps in the gym. Um, they're unlike anything else. If you do enough volume, your whatever muscle group you're working that day, like physically hurts, it's so pumped up. I can't say anything negative about it. Also, isn't it advised to take it like an hour before because it takes a cup, like some time to get into your system compared to like a stimulant which just like kicks in right like there. Yeah, I usually take mine an hour at least beforehand okay. because it does take around 60 minutes to get into the bloodstream. So yeah. a lot of people like to just pound back their pre-workout and then go into the gym 
and if you work out for an hour, well then the pre-workout's hitting your system when you're done, yeah. so you're wasting it. Yep. Um, I like to drink my pre-workouts at least 30 minutes before I go to the gym, if not an hour beforehand. One of my favorite pump ingredient is a uh, glycerol. Sometimes it's mentioned as pump max in a lot of pre-workouts. It's the exact th same thing as uh, citrulline. It's like a vasodilator and helps you just pump blood all over your body. And you just get that feeling of that skin splitting pump that most people put out. It also makes you like super vascular. So that's one of my favorites. Do you have any other favorite pump pre like ingredient in your head? Um, I have a couple that I like. Agmatine sulfate, it's a good pump ingredient. Glycerol, as you said. Yeah. And I also like to drink carbs because when you flow carbs in the muscle, you yeah. get a huge yeah. pump. Yeah. So now that we went through ingredients, there are some companies which actually have everything we mentioned in just the right amounts and it helps you get that pump or the focus you want. So let's cover this section in two parts. Let's go through our favorite pre-workout that helps you focus while giving a, you a pump, like the main goal of the pre-workout is for focus and the second one which is like a steam free and all about pump. So go with your favorite steam first. Uh, my favorite steam based pre-workout has to be Mesomorph, the APS Nutrition. You can't buy it anymore because it, uh, it was banned, but before they banned it, I ended up getting a couple tubs of it. Yep. Um, I love it. I mean, it tastes really good. Um, it's got great ingredient profile. Doesn't it come with like a bombsicle flavor or something? Yeah, it's rocket pop. Okay. So it definitely makes for a great workout. Mm. Uh, my personal favorite stim, I actually like mixing two stuff. So I have this pre workout Ace Extreme by Unnatural Labs, and then I have Nitroflex, which is really high on caffeine. It's like 325 mix. So I'll generally do one scoop of Nitroflex, a scoop of Ace Extreme, because Ace Extreme doesn't have like a lot of caffeine. And then I'll add the same Ace Extreme comes with DMAA, so I'll add raw DMAA into it. And that's like my best, uh, what should I call it, steam junkie combo. And just gives me like the best focus and like uh, constant energy throughout my workouts. What's your uh, favorite pump product, like pump pre workout? Uh, there's a product by Project AD called Nitrox, okay. and uh, it has all the clinical dosages of citrulline malate, glycerol, agmatine, basically all the best pump ingredients at their clinical dosages all put into one. It tastes really good. I've never had better pumps than when I take that product. Okay. Yeah, recently I've tried a lot of pump products but recently I tried this thing uh, called uh, Noxygen by Purus Labs. It's not like, it doesn't have a really large ingredient label. It has glycerol and like a couple more, uh, a couple more pump based uh, ingredients in it. It's only like the scoop is like three grams and it, it's really crystally. I, like, it doesn't fit in your scoop so you have to like break it down and whatever you put into it makes it taste really good. So I generally add it to my Gatorade or something so I also get my carbs in and that has, gives me like the best pump ever. So we went through our uh, favorite ingredients, we went through our favorite pre-workout companies but most of the companies out there have these things called prop blends in their pre-workout. What's a prop blend and why you should avoid it? A prop blend is a proprietary blend. They say they use them because they don't want other companies to take their ingredient profiles. Yep. Really, it's just scamming you, the person that's going to buy the product. Um, they don't have to tell you the amounts of the ingredients that they put in there. They can tell you, hey, we use X, Y, and Z, but they don't have to tell you they use this much of X, this much of Y, and this much of Z. So they can put the best ingredients in there, but if they only put a minuscule amount, you know, they don't have to tell you about that and you're wasting your money. So I don't buy any proprietary blends at all. Um, I just have other places to spend my money and if a company is not open enough to tell me what, what they're putting in their products, then I don't trust them enough to give them my hard earned money. True, true. I would say Nitroflex has a prop blend, but the main reason I use it is because of its caffeine content, which is 325 mg, which is one of the highest in pre-workout. And it just gives me that feeling that I have not gotten from any other pre-workout. So that's the only reason I stick to it. So don't question me, even though we are hating on uh, prop blends. But one thing which we should have mentioned to begin with is food. Food is the best pre-workout. If you have a right amount of carbs and proteins before your workout, 
you will literally have the best pumps without using any of these products we mentioned before, right? Yeah. Um, if you eat some some rice or really easily digesting carbs like an hour, two hours before you work out, uh, those sugars are going to be in your blood and when you start pumping out reps, they're going to flow to your muscles and they're going to fill it up. Yep. yep. You're going to get a great pump. Also, I have to add, if you're training, if you're working out and you're doing reps and you're not targeting the muscle you're trying to work out, say you're trying to do bicep curls and you're not feeling every contraction, you're not going to get a great pump. You need to do stuff that works for you and able to get the best pump. These products only work if you train correctly. If you don't train correctly, you might as well just pour down the drain. Yep, true. As Arnold used to call it, the mind-muscle connection is where it's at. If you don't have a good mind-muscle connection when you're lifting, you'll never get a good pump. And that was all about pre-workouts. We'll slightly go into intra-workout supplements. So, you said you only like to take two things intra-workout, right? What are those? That would be carbs and essential amino acids. Yeah. Yeah, so essential amino acids and carbs. So, we actually went over it in our previous video, which was the best muscle building supplements. So, go back there and you can get a more in-depth review about what e is and R are and like how you should use it. But, can you just like scratch the surface so everyone like who is watching this video right now gets what e is are? Yeah, I like to use essential amino acids because they reduce cortisol. Cortisol is a catabolic hormone, which means it, it breaks down muscle. Uh, it also boosts muscle protein synthesis and reduces muscle protein breakdown. If you want to grow muscles, you have to be in a positive net protein balance, which means your muscle protein synthesis has to be above your muscle protein breakdown. So essential amino acids and carbs together form this awesome synergistic ability to raise muscle protein synthesis, blunt muscle protein breakdown, so you are in a positive nitrogen balance pretty much the whole day. Um, when you go to train, you raise your cortisol, you raise muscle protein breakdown, and you lower muscle protein synthesis until you eat food afterwards, which could be two hours, and on top of the time you haven't already eaten. So if you drink something that'll raise muscle protein synthesis and lower muscle protein breakdown, you're putting yourself in an anabolic situation so you can have a more favorable position to grow muscle. Yeah, we went a bit more into what e -A's are in our uh, previous video, so definitely go check it out. Uh, you also said you like to take intra-workout carbs. I personally like taking the, those too. I just buy simple dextrose, like Gatorade is one of my favorite. Uh, just tastes really good, gives you that energy throughout the workout. What's your favorite intra-workout carb and uh, what's your take on that? Uh, I personally like highly branched cyclic dextrin. Um, it's very expensive. There's a lot of science behind it to prove that it works. When I drink it, I feel like I could work out forever. Literally, I don't get tired during workouts. I could stay in the gym for like five hours. It's it's insane, the difference it makes. Um, I don't get as sore when I drink it. It tastes pretty good, but as I said, it's very expensive. So recently, I've switched to using dextrose, and I found that it works just as well for about a quarter of the price. Yeah, so best intro workout carb, dextrose. I also see some people eating uh, Sour Patch Kids. Is that advice? Um, I don't advise that because it's food and when you eat food, it pulls blood from your muscles to your gut to digest yeah, yeah, the yeah, food. Yeah. Um, dextrose enters your stomach and it has a high molecular weight so your body doesn't need to pull very much blood into your digestive system to pull it to your blood sugar or to pull it to your sugar so you don't lose your pump. If you're eating, it's not what the body was biologically adapted to do. When you're running away from a saber tooth tiger, you're not going to be sitting there eating. Yeah. So it's going to take away from your workout, I, I personally think. Um, if you're a power lifter and you're sitting there for 10 minutes in between sets, um, I don't think that's going to be much of a difference. You can eat your power Sour Patch Kids or Rice Krispie Treats or whatever, but yeah. I prefer to drink drink my carbs. 
all yeah so basically that's all of it we went through the pre-workout part and the car part we kind of dwelled a bit into each segment but not too deep as i said before everyone watching this is not a professor so all you need to know is the basic science so you're smart and you're better at buying and using supplements out there so this is technically gonna be the end of the video next week we're gonna be back with a new video with a new topic and more information to make you guys smart so until then like subscribe share comment and stay tuned see you next week guys